I've used a lot of laptops this year, a lot. It's kind of tiring to think of all the time testing out laptops that I've done this year, but, but that's neither here nor there. After one solid month of use, I'm prepared to easily call the brand new M1 MacBook Air the best laptop released in 2020. So uh, why is that? Let's find out. I hope it didn't shut off the camera. I've got that running the camera right now. What's up everyone? I'm the Everyday Dead. And if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Seriously, go through my back catalog of laptops this year. They are, it's just, it's crazy to think of how many laptops that I've bought this year to share with all of you. So much fun and I really appreciate everybody coming along with the ride. The MacBook Air is the cream of the crop. Before we start getting into why the MacBook Air reigns supreme though, I do wanna kinda lay out what I need in a laptop for 2020. Because as you've heard me mention several times, I've been teleworking, like working from my home office down here since March. Yes, YouTube is a hobby of mine, if you didn't know it. I, I definitely don't do this full time. And if I'm home all of the time, why even have a laptop? If you're not gonna be traveling, Gary, wouldn't you be better off buying a desktop? Wouldn't that be the better purchasing option with its lower cost of entry, but also more powerful components? And maybe that's, you bring up a good point, me. Uh, and maybe that's a video that needs to be made all on its own. Maybe that's a topic for its whole other video. But what I've learned this year is that sometimes I like getting my productivity on in different places and different times throughout my house. For some reason, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just that I'm trapped inside all day long but all I cannot stand long. to just sit at my office desk for eight to 12 hours a day working. It drives me bonkers, drives me bonkers. I guess it makes sense when you think about it. My main hobby, YouTube, is just more work. So I like being as mobile in my house as possible and from time to time, just to get out of the house, I'll drive and park somewhere and work from my cars. Long rambling story aside, yes, laptops still have a place and that's why I've bought so many of the darn things this year. And when we lay out what a laptop needs to do, there's really five categories of things from a functionality standpoint that they really have to do. And those are battery life, power, portability, thermal performance, and usability. The, it's not a trifecta, the, the quinfecta. So let's start ticking off some of these boxes while also comparing the MacBook Air to some of the other options we've checked out this year to see why this is absolutely the best laptop of 2020. The first thing we're gonna talk about is, app, for me, is the most striking thing of all of the new M1 MacBooks. It's the battery life. 18 hours of battery life on this thing. That's insane. That's insane. And while there aren't very many of us that will use a laptops for 18 hours straight, my eyeballs ache thinking of that. What this really buys you is not needing to be tied to an external battery or even regular recharging schedules. As a YouTuber, I'll tell you that keeping batteries charged is absolutely the bane of my existence. Look, just to make this video, I need one, two, three, four, potentially five batteries charged and ready to go, including the battery in the MacBook Air because I needed it to type the script. Having one less battery to manage is a godsend. And I love how useful and practical having a computer that can go literally four days is. Plus we'll talk more about power in a little bit, but Apple computers do not lose power when they are unplugged from the wall. So wherever you go with this excellent battery life, you get the same power as you would if it was set up in dock mode with all sorts of accessories plugged into it. Compare this to what is probably my favorite design laptop of the year, the Dell XPS 15. It technically does have a bigger battery, and yes, it is a much bigger laptop. However, this will only net you around 12 hours of battery life, more or less. It depends on what configuration you get, because the base model has a substantially smaller battery than the higher end options. And it is. It's kind of unfair to say that the XPS has bad battery life, because it doesn't. It's a fantastic laptop in its own right that was really close to winning my laptop of the year nod until this came out. It has fantastic battery life. It's just when compared against this, it's not the same. And a negative when it comes to a Windows laptop is when it's unplugged from the wall, you will experience a performance hit that gets worse over time as the battery drains. Sure, the MacBook Air lasts forever, Gary, but if it can't get work done, you might as well carry around a regular old notebook made out of paper like a dinosaur. Well, thankfully the MacBook Air is stacked when it comes to performance as well in certain circumstances. That's not a backtracking statement. That's just the nature of the beast that Macs work, a Mac computer, regardless of what processor is inside of it, it works phenomenally well when used inside of its own ecosystem. But even more so when we niche that down into the M1s because for them to really shine as mobile powerhouses, you need to be using the software that's been optimized for its ARM architecture. Yes, other software will work 
it'll work through the Rosetta 2 program. It just won't work as well. So that out of the way, as somebody that's frequently used software has almost fully transitioned over to the M1, it's incredible, incredible. I, to this day, I cannot believe that a laptop like this, that's this small and takes up this little amount of room is as powerful as it is. No, I'm not a coder, I'm not a designer. I'm an office worker that dabbles in video editing. And this computer has served as my only machine for weeks. Just, I like doing that just to show that it can. I do video editing, word processing, content consumption, calendar syncing, emails, everything from it. And I do this with the base model that has one less GPU core and only eight gigabytes of unified memory. Saying that I continue to be surprised at the power on hand in this $1,000 laptop, that would be an understatement. I used to do most of my office type work on an iPad Pro. I loved that thing for what it was because it was, well is, is a powerful, super portable monster of a productivity machine that also happened to have incredible battery life. But it's always a compromise there because of iPad OS. However, now I don't have to compromise and use that operating system. What I really wanted to do all along was to use Mac OS, and now I get the same kind of power and portability on a Mac. However, I did say there were some conditions to make sure that this lined up with power. When stacked against a more traditionally powerful computer, say like the Razer Blade 15, which is probably the best all rounder laptop released this year, the MacBook Air does suffer in several categories. The big thing power wise is this has an integrated graphics card, while the Razer Blade, the model that I own, has a dedicated NVIDIA 2060 graphics card. That's pretty powerful. And if you use programs that need dedicated graphics, the Blade absolutely trounces the MacBook Air. Even if that program has transitioned to the Apple Silicon, the power of the Razer graphically is very impressive. However, to balance that out, it's also big, it's heavy, and it costs twice as much. Pulling that thread a little bit brings me to the glue that holds all of this MacBook Air talk together, and it's one of the main reasons to get a laptop instead of a desktop, and it's one of those key things we wanted to talk about, portability. Look at this thing. Look at this. It's tiny. It's plugged into the camera, that's why there's a cable. It's a 13 inch laptop that weighs almost nothing. When compared to that iPad, yes, it's slightly heavier, but holding them both in hand, or if it was in a backpack, you'd never be able to tell the heft difference. I, there just really isn't that much else to compare the MacBook Air 2 for portability because it ties all of the three previous categories together. It has the power, it has the battery life, so you can carry this anywhere and get actual work done unlike some other ultrabooks out there. The next category we're gonna talk about is thermal performance. We're not gonna dwell on that here, but no one is even gonna know that you've got a computer that's doing as much work as this thing can do because it doesn't have a fan and it makes no noise. Okay, if you do have something going through the speakers, then it makes noise. I know one, I just, I know one sarcastic person would say that in the comments if we didn't bring it up. I'm bringing it up now. Yes, obviously it makes noise if you're using the speakers. One of the things that all of the other laptops from this year do that drive me nuts, well, except the other M1 MacBook, is the second you put them under stress, they make a ton of fan noise. And that will either drive you nuts, or if you work in a house that has your family in it and you've all been stuck together for months, it will drive them nuts. Subtlety in our technology is very desirable when we are all trapped together in the same house since March. Ask me how I know that. Just ask, ask me how I know that. We mentioned it quickly, but let's talk about thermal performance. Like I said, the MacBook Air does not have a fan system. It has, there is no wink of active cooling built into this thing. And that really, when they initially announced that, that made me very nervous because thermal performance is the most important thing about laptops. Portability is important, but if you're gonna buy a machine to do work, Thermal performance is the most important. When I tried out the earlier i3 MacBook Air, it did not impress me all that much, even though the processor was puny and painfully slow. Even then, it would overheat. And if you go too heavy on the processor on those older versions, they'll just be throttled anyway, so why waste the money? Imagine that. Thankfully, in the past month, I've used the crap out of this thing, and I have yet to see a single issue with thermal throttling. The only time I've seen this computer slow down is when I'm purposely trying to overtax the unified memory by rendering video, having lots of Safari tabs open, chatting on Telegram, and listening to music. When I'm trying to do more than a computer should probably do at one time, then I can get it to slow down. And it was only temporary because when I closed some of those excess tabs, the problem went away. 
and it was memory, not heat. I bring up the thermal log often, and I haven't yet seen a heating issue crop up, which combined with that battery life, it still just leaves me flabbergasted. Still just leaves me flabbergasted. Compare this to something like the i5 MacBook Pro 13 from 2020 that I was so happy with back in April. While I never had a big issue with its thermal performance, it would have throttling from time to time that I could measure through that thermal log command in the terminal. It never dropped core counts on me because it was decently thermally managed, but the fans would kick on and I would see a clock speed decrease when doing heavy lifts like video editing or video rendering. Which brings me to the final big topic, usability. And okay, this is the one thing, if I had to give the MacBook Air one weakness, it would be in the usability category. Not due to its keyboard, which is my favorite laptop keyboard on the market and easily the best one of this year. Not because of its beautiful retina panel display that has P3 color accuracy and goes up to 400 nits of brightness. And it's not because of its software stability because Big Sur on the M1 chip has been the most stable I've had from an Apple machine in a couple of years. No, the usability problem that I have is much like on all lower end MacBooks, it only has two Thunderbolt throat. Let's not yank the camera. It only has two Thunderbolt 3 ports and those happen to be right next to each other. And this is a problem because as much as I transition between laptop mode and dock mode, it would be infinitely easier to do that if there were one on each side. Or if we're being real quick, if we're shooting for the moon of things we'd want, even two on each side. But these are Thunderbolt ports and they are incredibly useful. And you really can basically get a whole computer's worth of I.O. from a dock that works through just one of these ports. Man, that's why I want them on each side so it would be so much better if there was one on each side. I don't complain about SD card slots anymore. I don't, because that's a ship that has sailed. But I, I do think we could get more diverse ports. And that's one of the reasons why I keep the MacBook Air over, say, something like the new Ryzen laptops that we're seeing this year, like the Dell G5 SE. We did try one of those out earlier this year, and it has a monster of a processor in it with the Ryzen 4800H. That machine was crazy powerful, and it was very reasonably priced. But it had no Thunderbolt ports, meaning you were very limited by the kind of expansion that you could do through one of its USB-C slots. Plus, it was kind of big and it was kind of loud. And though it was priced roughly the same as the MacBook Air, the chassis was plasticky is the kind word I'm going to say. It didn't feel good at all. And lastly, I do want to touch on the price. The M1 MacBook Air gives you a very portable, very powerful, long lasting and convenient machine all for around a thousand dollars. And while no, that's definitely not cheap. Thousand bucks is very expensive. It's absolutely competitive. And I will say that this is a darn good value for the money when you compare it to what else is on the market that tries to do what this computer can do. And Apple, Apple, if you're watching, you should feel great for what you've achieved so far this year. This is a marvel. I love this computer. This is one of my favorite computers of all time. And that's why, I mean, the M1 MacBook Air took a line that I thought was pretty useless and I actively recommended against people buying and they turned it into easily one of the best deals on the computer market today. Phenomenal. And sure, more powerful machines will come out in the next year, but I'm not sure that anything will be able to touch the M1 MacBook Air for being an all around amazing package for the money. And that's why I give the best laptop, heck, the best computer crown to the M1 MacBook Air. So good. If I had, to, let's talk runner up though. If I had to give a runner up, I'd easily give it to the Dell XPS 15. It's the most beautiful laptop of the year. And it has one of those foregone SD card slots. It's like really all that I need. Only it had a better graphics card and better unplugged battery life, the XPS 15 would have won. And if you like this video and you're thinking about or have gotten a new MacBook Air, here's a video that will show you all of my favorite accessories for the best computer of the year. And you can find it, you click right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.